Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host Sana Makbul back with you once again bringing you top stories around the world and of course within Pakistan as well and hopefully giving you an angle that lets you understand all sides of the story. We have two top stories in this show today. One on the domestic front, of course, what is going on with the opposition parties, something that we have been discussing in our show for quite some time now. We'll see how that has progressed. The government, uh, the opposition has uh, still been talking about the fact that it has plans to topple the government or that it has devised a strategy uh, that they're going to defeat the government. This, of course, uh, comes in the um, aftermath of uh, many uh, bills uh, that have seen much controversy. And we've seen that now the PMLQ, a um, very central ally of the PTI, has also parted ways, something that uh, has been going on for a long time now. Um, and with regards to the PMLN and the PPP, uh, the different stances that we see emerging from the opposition parties, that of course is nothing new. We've seen that happen uh, with the opposition parties before as well. Uh, but whether or not they have a strong stance against the government at the moment, uh, whether or not they will be able to go forward with uh, many of the options that they bring forward, including a uh, no-confidence motion against the uh, chairman Senate, all of these need to be discussed in further detail to actually realize what sort of options are there for the government in the future, uh, what sort of uncertainty can be expected from the political scenario in Pakistan, and how the opposition plans to go ahead. So these are all the different topics that we will be exploring in the first story. And of course, we will also be looking at the top story around the world, which of course is the evolving situation in Afghanistan. Now, many times in our show, we have spoken about how the ISK is a major threat for Afghanistan and a very important commitment from the Taliban regime in Afghanistan is the fact that the Afghanistan soil will not be used against um, any other international community or territory or country um, and so this remains an important commitment that the Taliban still need to ensure the ISK of course is a major threat to not only the Taliban regime but of course for the Taliban's commitment to be ensured we know that they have started a campaign against the ISK um, this of course has come after many attacks by ISK including bomb attacks uh, in the recent months in which we've seen a number of people who lost their lives um, so we're going to see whether or not the Taliban regime is actually prepared to deal with the threat that it ISK. Um, does it realize the kind of step it needs to take to be able to ensure its government and to deal with all the different scenarios? Um, and what options do we have in the future for engaging with the Taliban in terms of ensuring their commitment? So these are some of the areas we will be exploring in our second story. So now let's begin our show today. And of course, we have been joined by none other than Mr. Farooq Batafi and Mr. Raja Faisal in the show. Thank you very much once Thank again you. for Thank joining you, me. Thank you. Uh, starting off with the opposition party and its stance uh, against the government, something uh, we've seen uh, recently, they've been discussing how they will be devising a very strong strategy against the government. Um, it seemed for a moment that they were on the same page, but again, we have different stances coming out with the PMLN saying uh, that it wants to move forward with a no-confidence motion against the Chairman's Senate. The PPP and JOF saying that it has not agreed to any such decision. Um, Farooq, the opposition parties keep on saying they have many options. Firstly, let's explore what options do they have. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, before um, asking whether they have options or not, the question is do they have any uh, you know, candidates for any post at all, right? Mm. Um, uh, regarding Punjab, where uh, uh, it seems that all this uh, uh, earthquake or minor earthquake uh, might be taking place, uh, they uh, don't seem to have actually come together and decided that there is going to be one candidate from the opposition side. Is it going to be Hamza Shahbaz? Is it going to be uh, Shahbaz Sharif or somebody else? We don't know, right? Um, uh, and why do we not know? Because they keep on fighting among themselves. And I'm not merely talking about parties. I'm not talking about within parties. I'm talking about within families, right? Mm. Um, um, uh, regarding uh, the center as well, I think, um, uh, let me uh, put it this way. Uh, I believe that uh, Pakistan, in Pakistan's politics, uh, opposition doesn't uh, really understand what is going on. So what they do is they actually rely heavily on the punditry and how the punditry interprets uh, various things, right? Um, and um, uh, this is the punditry that has been actually for 20 years confusing this nation uh, with conspiracy theories uh, that is going on even right now. 
and because of that everything seems to be in dog drums. Uh, opposition repeatedly came to Islamabad, repeatedly tried to actually stage some kind of uh, protest. First Maulana Fazlur Rahman came to Islamabad, then we saw PDM was uh, being created, then we saw what happened in the Senate elections mm. and after that um, uh, People's Party and PDM actually parted ways. Uh, today also, I don't think anything is going to change. They are uh, uh, basically interpreting a lot of things which, are, which might not be there. Um, uh, uh, just a reflection on punditry. Today's uh, newspapers or their websites carry two very interesting uh, uh, news reports. One news report is that PMLQ, that is a crucial ally of the federal government and the provincial government in Punjab, they have decided to part ways. And then on the same page, there is another news item that all allies of the government have agreed in principle to support the idea of EVM hmm. in the joint session uh, uh, day after tomorrow. So the question at this moment is which one is right? I tell you, uh, at this moment, the punditry itself is so confused. Every person is trying to project their own wishes on what is going on. Uh, basically, at this moment, what we are hearing is that the um, uh, allies were uh, seeking some more concessions. Mm. They are going to get them and then everything is going to be hunky-dory. So opposition, once again, is uh, building uh, castles, uh, castles of uh, sand uh, or building castles in the air. Nothing more. Right. So the PMLQ um, has not parted ways with the government. Yeah. yeah. At this moment, what we are hearing, they are going to continue to support. Uh, uh, the actual story or the crux of that story was that they have empowered their leader, that is Parvez Zilahi, to negotiate on the part of the, uh, of the party. Right. Uh, and that is going to happen. They are going to demand more. Uh, they have expectations regarding um, uh, Parvez Elahi's uh, future candidature as the CM, mm. perhaps after 2023. Those things will be negotiated um, uh, eventually, but at this moment it seems that the federal government or PTI's government has uh, won this round and they are going to present the EVM bill day after tomorrow. Okay, Faisal, even so, um, of course, uh, there are many other concerns uh, within a PTI as well um, and across Pakistan as well regarding, of course, the increase in prices, uh, the energy tariffs, of course, the depreciation of the currency, other such issues. Um, and then, of course, we have many of the bills which we saw. Uh, um, many of the allies of PTI also had reservations. Um, now, since, uh, of course, the government wants to be able to bring them on the same page, what sort of an effort or strategy is in place by the government uh, to ensure that they don't lose central allies like the PMLQ? Uh, Sana, uh, it's a very good question. Yes, uh, government is, you know, uh, going around and uh, trying to uh, bring the allies on the table and talk to them, as my uh, worthy colleague has already mentioned, that uh, they have successfully talked with them today and they are uh, on Wednesday, uh, you know, coming to the joint session and uh, they will be uh, going for the uh, electronic uh, voting machines. So uh, I think to some to some extent they are successful and they are successfully dealing with their allies. Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, tell you something very important about uh, a, a, an important ally in Punjab that matters a lot. Uh, PMLQ I want to talk about. PMLQ is a party, uh, you know, Everyone knows that they uh, hadn't had any ground left, political ground left, and to some extent, PMLQ uh, gives uh, ownership to uh, uh, you know Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf as well because their revival uh, in the interior Punjab and in the uh, central Punjab, uh, their revival was only possible through them uh, sitting with the uh, you know uh, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf and they jointly. Uh, ran for the different seats and of course uh, you know they negotiated where to uh, put their own people and later on what we saw that they were uh, you know the very first ones to come to PTI to uh, you know uh, sit with the uh, government benches. Uh, this is quite important because uh, uh, Chaudhrys of Gujarat they do realize it that uh, PTI played a key role to bringing them back on the political scene. So they will never forget that okay. and uh, their uh, political history tells us that they have uh, you know, uh, never backed out of uh, friendships. So I believe 
uh, whatever happens, they will be standing with the uh, government. And if we uh, talk about the government, uh, why government is facing these problems? There are uh, two very important uh, uh, things I want to highlight. Number one, uh, the economy. Uh, everyone knows that economy is seeing a dire situation just because of one reason, that there was pandemic for two years and uh, import-export ratio, it just, uh, you know, was imbalanced. Hmm. And now when uh, literally government is wrestling around to bring the economy back on the scene and uh, to improve that, and there's another important thing that if we look at the government's, uh, government's uh, unprecedented stance on the foreign policy uh, that has never been seen in Pakistan before mm. and the decisions which are being made by the government they are not only better for Pakistan but the region as well I mean if we talk about Afghanistan that is good whatever uh, uh, the government is doing so while they are making these decisions of course they will be uh, you know uh, seeing some kind of opposition to it so to me uh, their de decisions and the way they are moving uh, along with the things, uh, majority of the population can understand that these are very hard decisions which are being made by the government, but they are the necessary one for the long run. Okay, um, Farooq, uh, considering yeah. this and the way forward, do you think that the government will have to uh, take some and lose some? Uh, right, uh, that is very important, but uh, while Faisal was talking about various things, I thought that he is... Uh, uh, a geo-strategic uh, and geopolitical uh, analyst and he has to actually take everything uh, in that <laughs> direction. But I will, t uh, you know, center the discussion and I will uh, yeah. bring you back to Punjab. Uh, it is not as if uh, there are no differences between mm. PMLQ and uh, PTI. Mm. Uh, one uh, very interesting development happened uh, that uh, PMLQ's uh, vice president, a very yeah. senior uh, office bearer, Salim Bariyar, whose son actually recently uh, staged um, an upset in Sialkot by elections, right? Uh, from the PTI's ticket, he has actually decided to join PTI, um, and that actually shatters uh, confidence of uh, PMLN, uh, PMLQ, PMQ. and PMLQ also thinks that hmm. gradually everybody will be actually uh, weaned away from its own grasp and they will be joining PTI. Mm. That is one thing. Secondly, recently what happened regarding TLP is uh, being uh, read into and a lot of people are speculating that there might be a elect electoral alliance in the coming days between TLP and PTI. Mm. So in that situation also PM, uh, PMLQ also has to actually decide and ensure that it has to have a space, right? Um, uh, my understanding is that uh, today's victory is a victory for two days or five days hmm. and then it will be another fight every day uh, and that has been happening in Pakistan politics for quite some time. Remember the opposition is very powerful even today. It, had it not been so divided, they could have really done their magic at least in Punjab. Uh, the second aspect is that the economics are really very tough. And because of that, uh, everyone uh, thinks that if they are going to, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, ch bring about some kind of change, what are they going to do with this uh, situation? Nobody has a magic wand. Nobody has a solution to our economic woes right hmm. now. So at this moment, uh, uh, it will be tough. And my, my thought is that the entropy or uh, verbal violence in the system is going to increase with every passing day. There will be attempts. But I think at this moment, opposition cannot see a solution coming because it doesn't, uh, it cannot reconcile within its own ranks. Mm -hmm. When that doesn't happen, there will be shocks to the system. But at, uh, as uh, today has proven, the uh, federal government and Punjab government know how to survive and mm -hmm. they have been surviving so far. Okay, Faisal, considering the fact that the PPP has um, said that uh, the PML and its decision or a statement regarding the fact that they want to move ahead with a no-confidence motion against uh, Chairman Senate is something that they have announced unilaterally, um, and that if that is so, can they also back that with the, the numbers that are needed to be able to achieve that? Uh, do you think that the, the PMLN or the opposition parties, if they do decide to uh, go ahead or reach an agreement regarding that, can actually uh, go ahead with this and have the numbers to back it up? Uh, Sana, one thing I want to, uh, you know, uh, talk about uh, uh, 
people's party here i don't think that they will be disrupting the system to an extent that it gets halted uh, remember previously i mean they have uh, uh, stated in in previous times as well that they want the system to move on and uh, to me i i don't think that uh, people's party would do anything of such nature and uh, when it comes to uh, you know pdm uh, they can try and uh, at the right right at the end i see people's party back in off once again and uh, nothing is going to happen and every would everybody would be getting the same pay, paycheck as they were getting previously but i wanted to uh, talk about uh, you know a very important factor which uh, has been highlighted by uh, my colleague mm. uh, farooq has highlighted an excellent point that tlp and pti there are vibes that they are uh, you know uh, they can be good allies of the future and especially when it comes to punjab we know that in previous elections every constituency wherever we see around 17 to 18000 votes they were grabbing on because they have excellent votes in the rural uh, punjab areas so it would be excellent if it takes place plus how do i see uh, the uh, role of pmlq in it i do see a pmlq role in it because uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, you know uh, historically pmlq and especially uh, uh, choudhrys of gujarat they are known for having votes in the rural areas and uh, you know they have a, no, a history of sitting with the uh, Uh, peers and with the uh, you know uh, factions of uh, different factions of religious factions of uh, Punjab hmm. so they will be playing their role and to me i think uh, they will once again sit with the uh, PTI and TLP together to fight with the previous ones who used to you know take their turns and uh, Uh, do a lot with the systems so i don't think uh, there would be any change okay, in it yes, for but i think for it has something to say i i, 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 I have to actually say two things <laughs> because apparently uh, fasel was agreeing with me and then he just poison pilled it <laughs> so i have to clarify i never said that the potential of a tlp pti alliance mm. is excellent one it is his views yeah. uh, i just said that there is this speculation in the air that yeah. they can be an alliance so that actually upsets uh, uh this party and it actually creates uh, this kind of situation but that is not all there are other aspects which are Break. very important to remember Break. earlier he just uh, pointed out that people's party actually um uh, is uh, going to back down uh, the, to be honest when you talk about the right. political situation Break. Uh, uh, when you talk about political situation, uh, uh, PDM is only sound and fury. All right, the all right. Only, Farooq, we'll, we'll only get back threat to this. that was actually posed wa- uh, was by People's Party in Islamabad Senate elections. Right. We have to move on to the next topic at the moment because uh, because our guests are waiting online with us. We're going to go ahead with two respected guests who have joined us on the issue of the evolving situation in Afghanistan. Uh, we have been joined by Torek Farhadi. He's almost a regular on our show now, a foreign affairs expert, and we've also been joined by Asad Jan, an expert on international affairs. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us. Um, regarding, of course, the situation in Afghanistan, we've talked about how earlier uh, the, uh, um, the ISK, of course, uh, is is a very major threat. to the regime um in taliban uh, in the in afghanistan um and the taliban have now started a fight against them are they prepared for this threat uh, mr farhadi first your comments uh, good evening it's pleasure to join you again um yes i mean uh, they are not a major threat to the regime uh the isis k uh, the numbers of isis k in afghanistan are very limited actually uh, the foreign fighters uh the afghan fighters that have joined them uh, in my mind uh, the taliban should uh, try hard to negotiate with them and see if they can uh, find a place for them in society uh, the problem with starting these kinds of fights is that there's always collateral damage as well today uh, there was a skirmish in kandahar between the taliban and uh, Uh, the daesh uh, and uh, two or three civilians also died and uh, this is how the americans uh, lost the war in afghanistan is uh, they went into the villages and uh, uh, they were looking for the needle in the haystack and uh, uh, basically they they 
damage they burned the haystack. And that's why uh, the regime uh, was corrupt in Kabul, but also it had completely lost popularity. Uh, the Taliban uh, should not make the same mistake. Uh, if there are 2,000 foreign fighters in Afghanistan, uh, those have to be delineated and uh, decided with what to do with them, but uh, uh, send them back to their countries or... Uh, uh, if they stay in Afghanistan, they have to uh, uh, become non-combatants. But the, the Afghan Daesh uh, are those people who uh, we should negotiate with. Of course, this requires financial resources. Uh, uh, also, it requires the ability to give incentives to these people to uh, come out of the fighting ranks. And also, it re requires uh, a lot of leadership on the side of the Taliban to accept, because um, in this very complicated, uh, murky picture, there's a lot of uh, settlement of scores as well. Uh, look, it, there has been 20 years of violence in Afghanistan, um, and there's a lot of settlement of scores also that um, come into play in, in, in uh, what we call uh, to make our jobs easy, Daesh. Right, of course. Um, this is this is a, a very important factor to ensuring that the Taliban regime can actually uh, in, ensure the fact that they are going to fulfill their commitment, that they actually have a legitimate stance and a good stronghold or, or at the, of the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, Mr. Azadjan, we um, uh, earlier the Taliban regime uh, spoke about how um, the um, most of the threat from ISK uh, they've managed to control it, um, and the fact that uh, attacks or exceptional cases um, such as the attacks on Mosul we've seen in the recent months um, is, is something as a one-off event that can spring up or is something that has happened in other parts of the world as well. Um, do you think that the Taliban regime um, is not taking this threat as seriously as it should? Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think the first, uh, the first and major uh, thing that we need to understand, and that's their ideolo ideological differences. Uh, after the Kabul takeover, ISIS, ISK emerged as a major violent and non-state actor in Afghanistan. Previously, obviously, uh, Taliban was holding this uh, title of non-state actor, and then the table turns. And since then, the group conveyed a, a strong message that Taliban are just uh, American puppets, or uh, they are not capable to run the country, and all that stuff. It has uh, actually it has challenged the ide ideological credential of Taliban, and that's most important. While declared them a non-believer or companion of the Crusaders, and that has been shared on um, I mean numerous time on their on their social media and, and their website. So and obviously ISK has claimed that they are the sole custodian of the ide ideology of Islamic State. So when it comes to that huge differences. And obviously, there is a difference of the sect. Uh, Taliban is like a Sunni, Dubandi uh, kind of people or Muslims, while ISK has a strong Salafi population and uh, stronghold. So uh, that kind of differences obviously emerge when it's emerged. So when uh, to bring the Taliban or to the ISK on the table, that's become very, very difficult uh, itself. In the recent years, I mean, when we, we, we said ISK has managed to survive in Afghanistan in the form of small cells, uh, obviously, previously, Taliban was doing the same, or guerrilla war, which is very easy in terms of running the, running the whole show or running the whole country. And um, IS, um, we, we have seen that they are very good in, Afghan, in Iraq and Syria. So, and, and secondly, most importantly, as it has been evident from their own social media account, that the current head, uh, who is the Shahab, who is Shahab al muhajir something like that, I mean, who's considered as the greatest strategist and expert in urban warfare. And I think he will continue uh, on relying on his uh, terrorist strategies, which we, which we have seen since, uh, since Kabul fall and Kabul attack. Uh, since then, I mean, they have emerged a major violent uh, opposition for the Taliban. It, so, we, Keeping, keeping all the scenario, uh, I don't think so. The uh, IS Khorasan can come to the table with the Taliban and negotiation because that has been already declared by the ISK that 
we, we do not believe on the Taliban. They are completely non-believer. They, 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 they are ideological differences, the sectarian differences. So with all the differences, uh, the other, the third thing uh, which which I have in mind is the uh, the there is a difference again with the Taliban and the IS. Taliban, I mean, all to all his life, all their life, they struggle within Afghanistan or some part of the Taliban or Pakistan. But ISK, which claims that they want to restore the Khilafat uh, in all over the world, and they started from Iraq and Syria, and now they want that Afghanistan should be the main battleground, and they want to expand all over the world. So uh, to me, uh, uh, rather than uh, focusing on uh, just Afghanistan, I think uh, IS has emerged as a major threat, not only for Afghanistan, but for Pakistan and Russia and China itself. And that's okay. that's that's what alarm me. Okay, so um, Farah, considering the fact that we have seen that the Taliban yeah. also had fought against something that they ideologically differed with strongly, and we've had two decades of war in Afghanistan, um, yeah. they must have an idea what they're up against, considering the ideological differences. Um, uh, perhaps the ISK also uh, does not plan to put down arms anytime soon. And if after two decades of war, the end result again was the negotiating table and the Taliban that we never thought would come to the table did in fact uh, come to the table and had negotiations um, uh, with uh, the parties uh, who are involved in the conflict. Yes. Um, considering that, um, how do you see that, that the Taliban knowing the kind of, uh, uh, the kind of fight that they're up against uh, will actually even consider this? Or right. is that a possibility somewhere way off in the future? Right. Uh, with the uh, kind of um, um, ascension of Taliban to the throne in Kabul, uh, one thing that seems to have been normalized uh, is use of violence, right? Um, um, although um, TTA or Afghan Taliban kept on using uh, force against what they called uh, foreign uh, entities mm. or they were foreign puppets, uh, but in the end, there were moments when soft targets, that is mm -hmm. the common people, were also attacked. So right now, the biggest worry is that uh, uh, the recent attacks that took place were basically in the mosques, uh, where you don't have any weapon, you don't have any way to protect yourself, and they are basically worshippers. Uh, this is the worst part of Afghan politics right now. But given what has been happening, and uh, because of Doha agreement and the bilateral agreements or, uh, you know, commitments by the Taliban with other countries, all those forces which were once allies like IMU or uh, ATIM or TTP, one by one they are going to drift away. Uh, that's why uh, uh, we see that they kept on pushing for us or Pakistan actually holding dialogue with TTP so that it doesn't actually join the ranks of ISSK uh, or ISKP as it is now called. Uh, then there is another very interesting thing that is happening. These elements were already there. Now there is a pipeline that every analyst talks about uh, of radicalism or pipeline of terrorism coming from uh, Syria, Iraq and all those places where things were uh, unsettled hmm. uh, from there to Afghanistan and these people are joining ranks of ISK, right, ISKP. So who is bank controlling it? This is the biggest question right now. And I think while everybody t talks about what ISKP is and how to fight it, it is important to actually focus on money trail, weapon trail. Hmm. Because uh, with that, you'll understand who the spoiler is right now. It seems that uh, to me, the spoilers are very clear, but uh, simultaneously such spoilers also keep on pretending that they are builders and they are reformers and uh, uh, problem solvers. So what exactly is going on needs to be, uh, be looked into. And while it goes on, um, uh, this uh, push against ISKP is very important. Well, uh, Faisal, considering the fact that the Taliban are now part of the state, they are the state, and um, uh, they're Surely it's, it's different how a state deals with threats and how a, a particular group or a jihadist group deals with a threat. Um, does the Taliban have a change in strategy in how they're going to be dealing with any sort of threats they're going to face, whether it be ISK or anyone else? Um, the, the state, uh, do they know how to interact with the groups differently now to ensure the interests of the state? Uh, Sana, uh, very first thing, you know, last week's Troika Plus, that has uh, played a key role in it. and. Uh, 
why we are seeing Taliban moving towards ISIS Khurasan right now. Number one, we were seeing that there were, uh, you know, uh, different uh, uh, terrorist activities going on in Afghanistan. And uh, we saw that one of the mosques of uh, Shia uh, Muslims, it was hit. Then uh, one of the army hospitals, uh, military hospitals in Kabul, it mm -hmm. was hit. And these sort of things were happening. And that's why right now uh, Taliban, they want to finish them all. And uh, there, there were things which were discussed uh, uh, in the Troika Plus as well. As we know that Taliban, uh, they are uh, required by uh, the Chinese, by the Russians, by Pakistan, that uh, Taliban must act fast against uh, ISIS Khurasan uh, because ISIS Khurasan is not only a threat to Afghanistan, but it is a threat to uh, Pakistan, it is a threat to China, it is a threat to the Central Asian republics. Uh, why I'm saying this? As uh, Farooq has rightly mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, uh, IU, uh, IMU plus uh, ETIM plus TTP is few of the factions of TTP, not all TTP, but few of the factions of TTP, they have already joined them. And uh, remember, we used to have Chechen fighters uh, who used to be, uh, you know, hang out, who used to hang out with the uh, TTP in past. Now, they are not here, they are with ISIS Khurasan and uh, that's why it is necessary uh, for Kabul to go forward and do it once and for all. Hmm. And I'm pretty much sure that uh, in the course, if Taliban would need any help, then uh, of course it would be extended uh, by uh, the neighboring countries like Pakistan, China and Russia, they will do it. And I'm sure that uh, Iran would do the same as well. Why? Because Iran knows that ISIS Khurasan wants to create a Sunni Shia divide within uh, Afghanistan and within uh, uh, Pakistan as well. And I'm sure they don't like it because ISIS Khurasan uh, are, is constantly doing uh, activities against the Shia Muslims in Afghanistan. Mm. And this shows that, of course, ISIS Khurasan has a plan. And one very important thing I want to mention here is that while Taliban were fighting uh, in Panjshir, uh, it is quite interesting that the previous regime, obviously, while it was uh, defending Panjshir, it seeked help from ISIS Khurasan against Taliban. So this is this is quite uh, you know uh, alarming. Plus, uh, there were uh, there were facts about it. There were sources who you, who were talking about it that uh, NDS, few of the uh, you know uh, members of NDS, they joined ISIS Khurasan as well. Of course, they want to. Uh, they are the ones who had resources, ground resources. They they know the maps. They know everything. Whatever is in uh, Kandahar and uh, uh, in Kabul. Of course, in coming future, they will be helping out the ISIS Khurasan. So Taliban know about mm. it and Taliban, of course, want to deal with them. Mr. Faradi, considering uh, the fact that the Taliban is facing this threat from ISK and then, of course, there's pressure from the international community regarding inclusivity of the government, do you think that the Taliban will be open to engage with perhaps moderate Salafis or the uh, minority Hazara community? Are they, are they willing to be able to engage with these groups to make sure that their government is in place? And, of course, the fact that the international community uh, keeps on emphasizing on an inclusive government, that they open a way or pave the way towards that. So, <laughs> and you're going to hear this from me, our first hope is that the Taliban stay strong and together for the sake of Afghanistan. That if the Taliban splinter and some of them agree to talking to the Salafis and some of them don't agree, uh, then we are going to have um, a weaker Taliban and the future of Afghanistan is at stake than any kind of uh, ISIS-K and uh, other groups uh, in the future, criminal groups, drug-related groups, can find power in Afghanistan. The first thing for us now is to hope that the Taliban between the various factions can stay together. Second, uh, that they can have this conversation within that in order to govern in the long run, they have to open up, yes, to the Salafis, especially in southwestern Afghanistan, uh, and uh, find peaceful ways to those Salafis who are Afghans, and two, 
to uh, um, open up to others, uh, the Hazaras, the non-Taliban, etc., uh, with whom they can govern together. Uh, this is what is going to uh, save Afghanistan from uh, becoming a battlefield. Uh, the last thing we as Afghans want is our country to become a battlefield between these groups, which are small groups, ISIS-K, 2,000 people. If this can be solved with strategy uh, and wisdom, the people uh, will not let these groups and their communities uh, flourish and hire more fighters, etc. Uh, if uh, the Taliban don't stay together and uh, part of the Taliban uh, as some uh, TTP, uh, etc., go towards the uh, ISIS-K, um, then yes, then this is uh, this is another chapter that is not good for Afghanistan. Actually, it will destabilize Afghanistan. We don't want right. actually uh, any intervention from uh, uh, foreign countries to help us take care of ISIS K. We, we would rather do it ourselves. But in order to do it ourselves, uh, we have to be together, uh, and uh, we have to um, do something for the communities in the country financially economically create jobs for young people so that there's no room for these groups to uh, exist in the ecosystem. Right. Mr. Asad, considering the fact that the engagement um, with different groups within Afghanistan is, is important, but then, of course, it comes uh, with, with the possibility that um, uh, within the Taliban regime, uh, you might have uh, friction or some parts of the regime may not completely agree. Um, at the same time, of course, the engagement with the international community may also seem to some um, uh, as against what they've been fighting for so long or as, as, being, as being too sympathetic to, towards what the international community community is demanding from the Taliban regime. Considering this precarious uh, situation, um, how does the regime balance this out? Well, uh, I think the most importantly, uh, the, 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 the region or the regime uh, uh, definitely, I mean, they must focus on Afghanistan and the Afghanistan situation is uh, deteriorating uh, with each day. Uh, not only by the financial or the health facilities, but I think this ISK uh, has emerged the most uh, lethal uh, threats for the Afghanistan and not only for Afghanistan but for the region. Uh, one thing which 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 worries me a lot, and the thing is that uh, ISK has uh, uh, an experience of international international experience. I mean, they work, they they fight uh, in Iraq and Syria and uh, and other countries. So what they did, they, they recruited the youth and the weaker community, uh, and and this is exactly what they are doing in Afghanistan. That the the army, the Afghan army, and the police uh, who were defeated by the Taliban, and, and those those youth obviously who were being affected by the Taliban or the, the suicide or the attacks. So the uh, the opportunity is growing for the IS uh, when it's come to the recruitment. Uh, or when it comes to the battlefield. But uh, the real potential of ISK will be determined by, by its ability to survive in Afghanistan. That's the biggest question. So if they can, if they can survive for the longer time, so obviously Afghanistan will emerge as a larger battlefield, not only for, the, for Afghanistan, but for the whole region, for the whole region and the surrounding, surrounding uh, countries. And at that time, I think that will be the most devastating period for uh, for, for this region. Farouk, do you think that uh, there is uh, any possibility, um, considering if the situation worsens, um, that the Taliban regime um, may desire um, outside help in this regard? Right. Uh, first of all, uh, earlier when you were talking about p possibility of reaching out to disparate groups, uh, may, may they be Shia groups or others. Uh, let me uh, first of all point out that at the start, uh, implicitly, uh, there was this uh, agreement that they are going to include hmm. various people within their ranks. Uh, hmm. For example, the Hazara areas have a mayor who is actually Shia but supports Taliban, right? Uh, similarly, selfies also and various other parts. But I struggle, uh, must. Uh, uh, to be honest, when I talk, uh, when I think about Taliban as a government, a functioning government, mm -hmm. uh, why am I saying it? I take you back to uh, Pakistan's own lawyers' movement 
then one day so, uh, some people started saying that it might convert into a political party and rule the country. So okay, who is going to be the finance minister, mm. a lawyer? Who is going to be um, a defense minister, a lawyer? Who is going to be foreign minister, a lawyer? Who is going to be prime minister, president? All lawyers, right? That is the complication with Taliban government in uh, Kabul and why? Because they are basically militant clerics. Mm. They, they know only two things, religion and fighting. Some, some might be more educated, who might be fluent in English, but do they understand economics? Do they know policy? Uh, without that kind of understanding of policy, you know, you uh, actually keep on losing steam and that is what is happening. And uh, frankly, when I look at the 40 years of Afghanistan's history, um, I uh, want to share uh, Farhadi Saab's op optimism or his uh, uh, concern regarding unity within the Taliban's rank. But uh, we have seen that Afghanistan is a place where entropy has been ruling and it has been growing. So uh, within Afghan Taliban's ranks, I think that there is going to be a struggle and it is going to increase. Will they be able to bridge the gap? I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, when you look at this uh, pipeline that I was talking about, there are questions. For example, when Finson uh, leaks actually came out, and after that, Pakistan also released a dossier. We saw a clear mention of those banks flagged by Finson, Indian banks and a couple of others that were providing money to such groups. Uh, uh, one political side has uh, been eroded uh, in uh, Kabul uh, or uh, Afghanistan, but the militant side or opponents have just appeared. So we have to dig deep into this, otherwise these things will continue without any reprieve. Right. Faisal, my last question to you before I take last comments from everybody else. Um, considering the fact um, that we we also have uh, the, the we also have uh, this really important uh, situation in Afghanistan regarding the ISK, um, and um, there are of course m large issues in this regard. Uh, we will take your last comment on the fact that uh, whether or not the ISK uh, is a major threat in Afghanistan, um, and uh, whether or not um, within the Taliban regime is that more of a threat or this one we'll come to you right after this which uh, um, of course the earlier topic that we were discussing uh, was the situation uh, within Pakistan and the opposition party's stance um, against the government in various bills we have been joined by the information minister Fawad Chaudhary thank you very much sir for joining us and being part of the debate Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. sir can you hear me well all right. Considering the fact that we have seen that uh, the opposition parties um, have got, uh, gotten together in the recent times and talked about how they want to devise a strategy against the government to defeat them um, regarding the bills, or of course uh, we, we have seen statements come out regarding a no confidence motion as well. Um, the government uh, previously, uh, the the opposition previously has also uh, spoken about different stances, um, yet uh, they don't seem to be uh, on a single page. Um, does the government uh, really face? Um, any sort of a major threat from the opposition? Is there anything different in the air this time around? Well, uh, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, the, the bills that we are bringing are not really, uh, you know, our, uh, uh, this is not an issue that is limited to PTI or Imran Khan. Uh, electoral reforms is a national agenda, and we believe that all parties uh, should move forward and uh, we need reforms everyone uh, every every party and every citizen person wants a uh, electoral system on which everyone has the confidence and this is an effort uh, by uh, pti to move into, move to in the right direction uh, to uh, you know to regain the confidence of the, of the ordinary citizen on the process of election and as we have said before we are ready to talk uh, with opposition on electoral reforms. We have, uh, you know, we have uh, proposed 56 amendments in the present system. And uh, if opposition wants to have their input, they are more than welcome to bring amendments or whatever, and we will surely accommodate that. 
Havadu, we also, um, uh, there has also been talk regarding the reservations that the PMLQ has uh, with, with regards to the bills or um, other reservations um, within allies of the PTI. Um, um, are, what, what, how much truth is there in, in these talks um, and uh, whether or not uh, the PTI and its allies are on the same page regarding the bills or any other issue? Yeah, we had a meeting uh, today at, uh, in the afternoon. Uh, Prime Minister chaired the meeting, and all the allied parties' leadership was there, and they uh, they had few questions. And uh, after you know uh, the replies from experts, they are now uh, absolutely uh, you know satisfied with this uh, electronic uh, voting machine and I voting, and they are they are they are showing their full confidence on the leadership of the Prime Minister, and all allies are together, and we will. Uh, and we have, as you know, we have summoned the uh, joint session on Wednesday, 2 p.m., and all allied parties will vote for the amendments. Right. Mr. Fawad, uh, one of our analysts, Mr. Farooq Latafi, would also like to ask you a question. Fawad Saab, uh, thank you very much for your time, sir. Let me ask you about a very interesting th thing that uh, while you were talking to the media, it surfaced. Uh, um, uh, your uh, associates and other ministers were talking about bringing the number of bills that you uh, are seeking to pass uh, from 20-odd bills to eight. Can you identify what are the major ones? I understand that one is EVM and I voting, and the other one might be regarding NAB. What other bills uh, you seek to actually pass day after tomorrow, sir? There are a number of bills, as you said. Number, the total number of the bills are 28. And the preference is obviously the electoral reforms laws. And then there's obviously the bill that about uh, uh, giving the right uh, in the case of, um, uh, you know, access counsel or access case. Uh, that, you know, that is another law that we want to bring in. There are, uh, you know, the laws relating to electoral reforms. And also the, uh, the offenses of uh, rape that the new legislation on the rape laws. So these are all the laws, those are our preference, and hopefully we will get to most majority of the laws. That is great. Right, uh, Mr. Fawad, uh, of course, uh, there are also concerns that are being raised uh, by the opposition regarding uh, the increase in prices or the energy tariffs or the depreciation of the currency. Um, uh, considering the fact that, of course, uh, the nation itself um, is also um, uh, quite concerned about all of these issues, and then you have uh, the opposition parties come together and put forward different stances, um, and then we, we see the situation um, in the National Assembly as well. Um, considering all of this, uh, do you think that moving forward uh, the the government has a proper strategy in terms of bringing about a consensus in the parliament on different issues and actually working towards um, decreasing the suffering of the common man well obviously the government policies are uh, you know focused on the uh, easing out this inflation and the and the programs especially the srs program kamyab pakistan and now Sehkar, all are focused on uh, the common man's perspective of uh, and how we can, uh, you know, make things easier for the common man. So we will continue working on these lines as well as the, you know, our uh, talks with oppositions are concerned. Obviously, the electoral reforms and other big reforms are certainly, uh, you know, we would like to have a joint, um, you know, kind of a framework with the opposition on those. Um, but if, if the position is not really keen in that, we will obviously go ahead with our own laws. And that's why this joint uh, session has been called. Right. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Fawad Chaudhry, the Information Minister. And of course, uh, much remains to be seen as to what happens in the joint session and uh, what is the fate of many of the bills um, that, of course, uh, have uh, witnessed much controversy in the recent times. Uh, before we conclude the show, uh, Faisal, a, a quick comment on the question I was asking you earlier regarding the situation in Afghanistan. Um, how big of a threat is the ISK to the uh, regime in Afghanistan? Is it a threat enough uh, that, the, that the Taliban may lose power? Or let me put it this way, is that the threat from ISK worse than the threat uh, uh, from the uh, from within the uh, the Taliban regime of its ability to run the government uh, Sana, 
I think it's a bigger threat for the world rather than uh, uh, Taliban. Mm -hmm. Why I say this? Because it's a backyard of ISIS Khorasan. So it's, it's a backyard of ISIS which is already fighting against the West, which is already uh, fighting against America. Hmm. So I believe the, the Western countries and uh, Americans, they should be more concerned about ISIS, especially ISIS Khorasan. So if Taliban are fighting against ISIS Khorasan, then at least, I mean, I'm sure Taliban won't ask for too much, but at least $9.5 billion which are, uh, you know, stuck in America of uh, Afghan banks, it should be cleared off and it should be given to uh, uh, Taliban. Why? Because Taliban are the ones who are fighting against a menace that can affect the whole world. Right. Thank you very said. much, uh, uh, Mr. Asad Jan and Mr. Tarek Farhadi for joining us uh, on the debate once again. Uh, this, of course, uh, concludes uh, both of our topics uh, in today's show. Uh, the situation in Afghanistan and the threat of ISK continues. And we hope that the Taliban regime is able to handle both that and its commitments well. And, of course, the situation within Pakistan is also going to be clearer when we see the joint session of the parliament on Wednesday. Of course, we will have much to say on that as well. Stay tuned to Pitway World. Join us tomorrow once again 9 p.m. on the debate.